It's monthly favorites time. July was a good month for me. It went by very quickly, but most months do go by really quickly. I was pretty busy, but I did a lot of fun things. And honestly, this is the first time in a long time where I'm not like chomping at the bit for summer to be over. I don't know if it's just that the heat has been relatively mild compared to prior years, but I'm really enjoying this summer and July was a good month for me. I have a lot of favorites in the realm of skincare and a few lifestyle favorites. Sunscreen love of the month has been this Epionce Ultra Ultra Shield SPF 50. I bought this from Skin Store a while ago and I finally got around to trying it out. And I have really been loving it. It is a combination sunscreen, so it has zinc and a few chemical filters. And whenever a sunscreen is a combination sunscreen, it tends to have a much milder to less noticeable cast than a plain mineral sunscreen. For me, I'm wearing it currently with nothing on over it. I don't have any cast with this product. Now, if you have a deeper skin tone, I think it definitely will give a little bit of that whitish cast, almost that lavender look because of the zinc. Very, very moisturizing, short ingredient list, free of fragrance. And this is very similar in the consistency, the look to the Dermatology SPF 45 sunscreen that I've always loved. However, this does not have that odd pool float odor. And this, unlike that product, does not have niacinamide, which a lot of people find is irritating, burns, and stings. So if you've tried the Dermatology one and you, know, you liked the way it looked, but there were some things about it that you didn't care for, definitely check this one out. It's actually ever so slightly a little bit cheaper than the Dermatology one. The Dermatology one works out to be $11 per ounce, whereas this is $10.40 per ounce, depending, I guess, on where you buy it. Now, it's not water resistant, um, so it's more of a daily moisturizer with SPF, but SPF 50 is quite good, provided you apply it to all sun exposed areas and you don't have any skip areas. You know, it's fine to use moisturizers with SPF. This is actually very moisturizing, but it's not greasy. Um, and it's a good one for either dry skin types or oily skin types. It's pretty no nonsense overall. It doesn't have like a bunch of antioxidants in it, which a lot of sunscreens do, and that's fine. Although whether or not the antioxidants actually get into your skin in a sunscreen that's designed to kind of set up and form a film is questionable, and some studies suggest that they don't. So I kind of appreciate that this is so no nonsense, um, but it's a very elegant formula. In terms of the cast, I mean, you can see what it looks like on my skin. Zero cast for me. And this is what I wore on my face the day that I did the Derma E photo shoot. I wore this on my face underneath all of that makeup. Didn't have any issues with the makeup, obviously, not, you know, adhering or pilling or anything like that. So it works well under makeup if you are in the market for a good sunscreen for everyday use for underneath makeup. I would suggest this. I've been really happy with it. So I've been using salicylic acid in my morning skincare routine over the past couple of months. I started washing my face again with a salicylic acid cleanser, mostly because I've been trying out some of these vitamin C serums for you guys. And in order to test them out, I wanted to put them on after cleansing my face with a salicylic acid cleanser because doing so, you know, may potentially help enhance the penetration. I'm not using any vitamin C serums. I only use them to test them out and, and you know, determine if they are irritating or not but I'm not using them as part of my daily skincare routine. Anyways, I am using salicylic acid in the morning and I've really been loving these Peach Slices products. Oh my gosh, these are fantastic. The salicylic acid uh, clarifying cleanser is what I've been washing my face with in the morning. Love it. Salicylic acid cleansers are really good for improving the look of sun damage, uh, gentle exfoliation. They're safe for deeper skin tones. And uh, this particular formulation is very moisturizing. It's got hyaluronic acid, it also has centella in it. This brand is vegan and cruelty free. You can get it at like CVS, Amazon, and Ulta. And I've also been using, after this, in the morning, after I rinse this off, I've been using the salicylic acid acne treatment. Now this is 0.5% salicylic acid in a moisturizer. So a very low percentage strength. Um, in comparison to this or their toner. Um, this is just a moisturizer with a, a low amount of salicylic acid. 
I really enjoy using salicylic acid in my skincare routine. I'm glad I've introduced it back into my skincare routine. I just like having it on board. I find that having that little bit of extra anti-inflammatory is good for reducing sun damage. I've noticed that a lot of times when there is a product that either has retinol or an acid in it as a moisturizer or urea, the application is a little streaky. You'll notice that when a moisturizer has an active ingredient like urea, salicylic acid, alpha hydroxy acid, or retinol, you'll notice it kind of goes on a little streaky. And that is the case with this, but otherwise the backbone of this, the formulation is very moisturizing. So what I've been doing is I wash my face in the morning with this, um, avoiding around the eyes, of course, because it has salicylic acid in it. You don't want to get that around your eyes. Rinse the cleanser off. And then I apply this again, avoiding around my eyes, um, allow it to absorb. And then I put on the Epion sunscreen on over it. You can do that and salicylic acid, while it's an exfoliant, it has a ring-like structure that actually can absorb a little bit of UVB. It's obviously not a substitute for sunscreen, but what I'm getting at is that it's more than fine to use a leave-on salicylic acid during the day when you're having UV exposure. Um, so long as you have a sunscreen and you're conscientious of you know, how much sun you're getting, as you should always be. I mean, it's not any different than if you weren't using it is what I'm getting at. So this has really been working out for me as far as my summer morning skincare routine. And I've really been happy with these products by Peach Slices in particular. Hair care favorite though, I have been loving the new Function of Beauty line at Target. I've been using the Wavy shampoo and conditioner for a while now. And these are just as good as the direct to consumer ones that you can get. The only exception is that um, you can't get them free of fragrance. These do have fragrance, but I kind of like the scent. Y'all know I've always enjoyed fragrance in my shampoo and conditioner. Anyways, these are really good. The base that I have is the wavy one. It's got uh, fermented rice water in the shampoo. I have a video talking about the benefits of rice water and hair care products and for hair. Um, it may be helpful for shine. And uh, so that's what's in the shampoo base. And then the conditioner base has argan oil, another great ingredient for the hair. And um, I also did a booster shot with these. I did the anti-frizz and I, I've really been happy with these. So if you are, if you've kind of been on the fence about Function of Beauty, you don't, you're put off by the like subscription kind of thing, I know a lot of people don't like that, then check these out at Target. Because if you try these out at Target and you like them, you're gonna like the ones that are direct to consumer if you've kind of been on the fence. Or you may just like these enough to stick with them or you may hate them. And in which case, you know, you kinda, it's, it's a good way to kind of scope out if you like these products or not. I have the wavy one, they have a straight one, they have a curly one, and they have a coily one. So for all hair types. Yeah, I've been using their hair care products for, it feels like three years now, and I love them. Definitely worth it in my opinion, and I especially love the serum. Yeah, the serum is like a holy grail hair care product for me. I cannot be without that. But the good thing about it is I don't use very much. So a bottle lasts like forever. Book update for the month that I read or audio read, Make Room, Make Room by Harry Harrison. You need to read this book. It is so good. It was written in the 60s about 1999. It's science fiction and it takes place in New York and it's all about the consequences of overpopulation and resource shortage. It's so good, but it's kind of creepy because it was written way back then about like 1999, and, but you kind of feel like this, it's kind of how it is now <laughs> type of uneasy. It, it leaves you feeling a little uneasy in the back of your mind, but it's an enjoyable read. Uh, or an enjoyable listen. And that being said, the Audible reader is pretty good. I've been happy with Audible. I always, I go back and forth with it. I know you can do the ones at the libraries, but honestly, I have not had good success with those. I find that they're a little twitchy and that I can't always get what I want. Can't always get what you want. But if you try sometime, you just might find you get what you need. Anyways, but the the library options are, are a good choice, especially if you're on a budget because they're obviously free. <laughs> I just, oh, the other thing about the book that kind of creeps me out now is the food source that they have is Soylent, which if you've ever seen Soylent in your grocery store, it's like this meal replacement shake. And I guess the creator of that product had some sort of 
sick humor behind the naming because yeah, I mean, I've never tried Soylent because um, yeah, it never really appealed to me, but I'm definitely not interested in trying it based on this book. It completely put me off just by the name. Let me know in the comments, have you tried Soylent? Is it good? Is it like a vegan insurer? It's kind of what it strikes me as, like, I don't know. Um, maybe useful if you, you know, have to be on a liquid diet or something, but ugh. All right, so that was a great read or listen. Highly recommend it. Didn't consume any, like, movies. I haven't watched Netflix. I need to cancel it. As a matter of fact, as soon as I turn off this camera, I'm gonna go cancel my Netflix because I haven't been consuming it at all. And Amazon has some good movies from time to time. So if I really have the itch to watch a movie, I'll go on Amazon, I guess. All right, that was the medium. And honestly, I really haven't been consuming that much YouTube, but a YouTuber I've rather been enjoying, Laura Jane Atelier, really fun content all about um, she's really into like retro things, things from another time. She goes through like the skincare routines of old Hollywood actors, famous people from like the, you know, 60s. And I think that's really fun to watch. So I've been enjoying her content. Fashion and accessories. I have been loving these hoops from one of my favorite jewelers, Sorelli. They make costume jewelry that's very good quality. I've had, you know, several pieces from them for a while now, but these I recently got, these hoops. And I love big hoops, but I cannot lie. <laughs> uh, sometimes they're just too heavy and I don't like heavy earrings on my earlobes. I don't want them stretching out or whatever. These are really light and they're easy to get off and on. They have a nice clasp, very comfortable to wear. And I don't know, they just give a nice summertime vibe. I think they would also transition into the fall. So yeah, I've been really loving these earrings. I got a several pieces from Sorelli and I loved everything. Like I have this large chain necklace that I also really like. But of everything that I recently got from Sorelli, I would say these are my favorite. <laughs> but yeah, they're really good quality jewelry, costume jewelry, if you, if you are a fan of jewelry like myself. All right, last but not least, July kicked off the first month of my new Erin Condren planner. And I just love the new like style. One thing that always put me off about Erin Condren planners was like, I don't know, it just didn't resonate with like what I would choose necessarily for some of the stylistic elements. But I love the, I love the flowers and the colors, you're a lot more neutral. I'm not so into the like you go girl type things and it, they've replaced a lot of those with, they've replaced those with just, you know, some sort of subtle quotes and nice faux watercolors. <laughs> So I've been really into my planner, but what I wanted to say, I've mostly been elated with, because I knew I would be happy with that planner. I mean, I've been using those planners for a while now and they're very good quality. If you are in the market for a planner, Erin Condren is really good. Um, the paper quality is amazing. But what has made my planning <laughs> this past month, starting in the new planner, all the better are these Zig Clean Color Dot Pens. These are for making a little to-do lists and having a little like dot next to each thing. It's a six pack. You get purple, yellow, green, blue, pink, and orange. And the vertical layout, if you're not familiar, it breaks up the day into like a morning block, an afternoon block, and an evening block. And so you can do the dots, color coordinate the blocks based on the dots of like what you need to do in each block. I love it. So highly recommend these. They're really nice. And um, this little bag, by the way, is one of her plan, one of their planty packs that are great for storing pens. And what I, I also like to use these in like a big purse to put, you know, things that would float around. They're really good. They have a little elastic, which is intended to actually go on the planner. 
Um, but I find that it's handy to hold on to the bag in your hand, have that elastic. And then there's a pouch in the back that you can put stuff in. These are really good. I love these planning packs. I have like 10 of them. That's, that's overkill. I think I have five or six. I have a lot. I love them. I use them for, you know, storage, pens, office supplies. That's everything from the month of July. Um, before you know it, it'll be September. I'm actually really enjoying summer this year for the first time in a long time. And I'm not like chomping at the bit for it to be fall and all things fall. Um, although I recently went into Kohl's and they already have the fall stuff out and I always enjoy looking at that. So I'm sure when it rolls around, I'll be happy that it's here. Anyways, guys, share in the comments below what you have been loving over the past month. And if you missed my last month's favorites video, it will be on the next slide. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.